Light pollution is public enemy number one in amateur astronomy. It doesn't matter if you're out with your telescope doing visual observing or doing deep sky long exposure astrophotography. It's something that impacts all of us. So what solutions do we have to this problem? Well, the first thing that's going to be best to do is try to drive to as dark of a sky as possible for where you live. But that's a very difficult thing for most of us in the modern world today. So what's the next solution? Today, we're going to focus on some of the best light pollution filters that I've collected over the years for my telescope and that the good people at Sivbani sent me to use for astrophotography. If you enjoy this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. But most importantly, let me know of your experience with light pollution filters and any questions that you may have in the comment section below. Now let's begin by taking a look at the filters that we'll be talking about today and how they specifically work to attempt to cancel out some of the light pollution to give you better views and images of the nighttime sky. When looking for a light pollution filter for your telescope and visual observing, it's important to start out with some reasonable expectations of what you can hope to get out of them. These are not a silver bullet that are going to magically cancel all of the light pollution in the nighttime sky and they do not make objects brighter through your telescope. What they do hope to do is cancel out certain wavelengths of artificial light that otherwise would wash out your object. This is going to give added contrast to the nighttime sky, hopefully allowing the object to pop out a bit more from the background of space, where it otherwise would be washed out from the light pollution. I have two light pollution filters that I've bought that I use specifically for visual observing and they're a UHC filter and an O3 filter. To use them, all you need to do is simply take them and choose an eyepiece of your choice and then connect them into the bottom threaded portion of that eyepiece. Now remember, when you're using a light pollution filter, they are not perfect and you probably will lose a little bit of the light from the actual object that you're trying to see. But the amount of light that will be cut that is artificial in terms of light pollution will make up for any of those losses and should help to increase the contrast and give a little more pop to your object in the nighttime sky. But again, just make sure you have reasonable expectations of what you're going to get out of these, especially from moderate and severe light polluted skies. Let's take a look at two charts showing the wavelengths of light affected by each filter. The UHC filter allows more wavelengths of light to pass through compared to the O3 filter which is more restrictive in its wavelengths. This narrower band of light allowed by the O3 filter makes it a more specific filter to use for certain targets, where the UHC filter is a more general purpose light pollution filter. Of these two light pollution filters that I own for visual observing, I'd say you're going to more than likely want to go with the UHC filter as your first choice. It's more broad in terms of the light that it lets in, and it's going to be better overall for most objects in telescopes under moderate and high light polluted skies. But I've got to say, of the two, the views of the Veil Nebula with the O3 filter are just incredible. The way that that object is not there and then is there when I do the light pollution filter is a pretty incredible thing. But again, if you're looking to buy one, I'd suggest going with the UHC filter as your first choice. Let's move into the world of astrophotography and take a look at a filter that the good people at Sivbani recently sent me to include in this video review. It's a CLS light pollution filter and it has different properties than the two that we talked about earlier. Beyond the fact that it cuts out different wavelengths of light with it being a CLS filter, it's also shaped specifically to fit into my DSLR camera. And that's an important thing that you're going to want to consider for astrophotography. Certain sensors cannot handle certain light pollution filters. Differences in the body and design of your DSLR, the size of its sensor, and even the lens that you're shooting with on any given night can have an impact on whether a light pollution filter will work with your imaging setup. Always be sure to double check with the manufacturer of the filters to be sure that it'll work for the equipment that you're using to image the nighttime sky. 
To use this filter, we have to take off the lens of the DSLR that we're using and place it right over the sensor of that camera. Let's go outside and set up our equipment to look at some examples with and without a light pollution filter to see how incredible the effect can be on the exposure links we can take and the details we can get out of these incredible deep sky objects. I'm outside on a gorgeous crystal clear night, ready to put this light pollution filter through its paces. To do this, I'm gonna be using my tracking mount and a DSLR camera connected to a 135 millimeter Samyang lens shooting at f2.8. We're gonna be testing out the nighttime sky on an object that I've wanted to image for quite a while, the North America Nebula. Up until this point, I simply could not get exposure links that were good enough to capture the faint details of this incredibly impressive and large target in the nighttime sky. To set this test up, we're gonna image the part of the sky with the North American Nebula without and then with the CLS light pollution filter to give us an idea of exposure lengths and how much data is being brought in from the histogram, particularly light pollution data that we may not want in post-processing. Let's begin this experiment by doing a 30 second exposure of the night sky on this target without our filter installed. As you can see, the histogram starts to fill up and the sky starts to wash out even at just 30 second exposure lengths under my Bortle 5 skies. When it goes up to one minute, 90 seconds and two minutes, it gets to a point where the data is simply unusable at a practical level. Now let's image that same portion of the sky, but this time with a CLS light pollution filter installed over the sensor of my DSLR. The histogram in these images show us the incredible effects of these light pollution filters. The true benefit of this is that I can now capture longer exposures of this object. Where I used to max out at around 30 seconds, I can now image from one to two minutes depending on the object that I'm trying to capture. These longer exposure times give me a better signal to noise ratio, meaning that when I get to stacking and post-processing down the road, I'm gonna be able to bring out finer details of these deep sky objects for my final image. This final image of the North American Nebula is made up of over two hours of data that I would not have been able to capture at this same level of fine detail and contrast without a CLS filter being used for my imaging. Again, just like for visual observing, Light pollution filters for imaging are not a silver bullet and there are downsides to using them. You have to do a good bit of post-processing to correct color imperfections introduced by these filters. Some targets see more of a benefit than others from these as well, and you do lose some of the data from the actual target that you're imaging. How helpful a light pollution filter will be for you will depend on the skies you shoot under, the equipment you're using, and the type of object that you're imaging. Sometimes it may actually be better to not use a filter depending on your specific set of circumstances. At the end of the day, nothing will ever be traveling to darker skies to do your observing or imaging. But when that's just not a practical thing to do on a regular basis, buying a high quality UHC, O3, or CLS light pollution filter for your visual observing or astrophotography is gonna be a great use of your money to take you deeper into this hobby. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below to some of the products that have been mentioned in this video. And please be sure to let me know in the comments section below about any light pollution filters that you use or any questions that you have about them. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from Late Night Astronomy.